Let's say that we wanted to check if the function y equals the sine of x plus x squared is a solution to the differential equation, the second derivative of y with respect to x plus y equals x squared plus 2. Let's say we wanted to verify that this is a solution, or maybe it's not a solution. And just as a quick side note, I am getting these problems from the textbook Fundamentals of Differential Equations by Nagel, Saff, and Snyder, 9th edition, just straight out of the textbook. So, let's say we wanted to verify, is this equation, this function, a solution to this? Well, we have to do one thing, because we have two main methods for determining whether a function is a solution to a differential equation. If the function is implicit, then what we have to do is actually implicitly differentiate the function and see if we can get back to the differential equation we had. So if it's implicit, we want to implicitly differentiate, implicitly differentiate, and see if we can get back to our old differential equation, the one we started with. Now, as our function is explicit, we don't really care about this for now. Our function is explicit, so let's look what what do you have to do if it's explicit? Well, if it's explicit, what you can do is you can just plug the function in, because we could fairly easily calculate y's first derivative, y's second derivative. We could substitute it all in to the differential equation and just check that it works. So for explicit, you want to plug in. Well, because our function is explicit, let's see how this is done. Well, as we can see here, we have y, but we also have the second derivative of y. So we're going to want to calculate the second derivative of y down here, y prime prime. But before we calculate that, it might be easier to calculate the derivative of the derivative. So let's calculate the derivative first. y prime, well, the derivative of sine of x, that would be cosine of x. Derivative of x squared, that's 2x. Okay, now that we have y prime, finding y prime prime isn't that hard. It's just the derivative of this up here. So the derivative of the cosine of x, that is negative sine of x. And 2x, the derivative of that is simply 2. Now we have everything we need to plug into the differential equation. So let's plug it in just up here. What we're going to have is that the second derivative of y, so we can plug that in as negative sine of x plus 2 plus y, so plus what we had originally up here, plus the sine of x plus x squared, is this going to equal x squared plus 2? OK, well, we can see right here we have some canceling terms. So we can go ahead and cancel out the sine of x. And what do we get? Well, we get that. 2 plus x squared equals x squared plus 2. Now this is clearly true. The left hand is equal to the right hand side of the equation. And because this is true, we can say that we know that y equals the sine of x plus x squared is a solution. We just verified it. It turns out to be a solution. This is a big green check mark. All right. That is how you verify the solution if your function is explicit. Now let's try again another problem from the textbook, but see an implicit function. Let's see if we can do an implicit function. All right, so let me find a good one. All right, this one says show that y squared plus x minus 3 equals 0 is a solution to solution to the differential equation dy dx equals negative 1 divided by 2y so well technically we could make this implicit we could go on our way and say, okay, y squared equals 
3 minus x, and we could take the square root, say y equals plus or minus the square root 3 minus x. We could solve this for the plus case, the minus case, and we could verify if it was a solution or not. But this is not what we want to be doing, because let's say we had a function that looked more like uh, y to the power of e to the power of the uh, e to the e to the 313 minus x sine of the cosine of e to the 1200. Let's say we had a function like this. This equals 2. We're not going to get y on its own. This is strictly implicit, and there is nothing we can do to isolate y. So even though in this special case of implicit functions right here that I'm showing you, this is technically, we could make it explicit. It's going to be good practice for solving it if it truly was an implicit function that we could not isolate y. OK, so because this is an implicit function, remember that if, if it is an implicit function, what we want to do is implicitly differentiate the function and see, can we get our function back into the form that the differential equation was in? So let's implicitly differentiate. So we're going to take the derivative with respect to x of this side, so y squared plus x minus 3. And this is going to equal this 0. Well, the, deriv the derivative with respect to any constant, especially 0, I suppose, is just going to be 0. So what is this? Well, when we, whenever we are differ implicitly differentiating, we have to remember this y squared is really a function hiding in plain sight. This is y of x squared, this whole function squared. And when we phrase it like this, it looks a lot more like the chain rule. So the derivative with respect to x of a function squared is going to be, well, first let's take care of the squared part. So this is going to be 2 times the function as is. But now we have to remember the chain rule. We have to take the derivative of the inside. Well, the derivative of y with respect to x, we don't really know what that is. But we could always just write it as the derivative of y with respect to x. So now we have this. And well, this is going to be fairly simple. The derivative of x with respect to x, that's 1. And the derivative of negative 3, any constant for that matter, just going to be 0 plus 0 equals 0. Now let's check if this is indeed what we get. OK, so let's right. I guess we can get a new color. So dy dx times 2. And we don't have to write it as y of x. Again, we can just write it as y times 2y equals. I'm going to move the negative 1 to the other side, negative 1. And so finally, if we divide by 2y, we get that dy dx equals negative 1 divided by 2y, which is indeed what we had up here. So by implicitly differentiating our solution, well, the solution that we thought might be true but might not be true, we were able to successfully verify that, yes, this is a valid solution to the differential equation. See you in the next video.